Hey, good morning and welcome to Laughing at Tigers. Uh, welcome to all you folks out in the interwebs lands. Um, we are here in Orlando and we know that you're with us. So um, I'm glad to have you. My name is Carol Dio. I am a comic, I'm a pharmacist, and I'm a carnivore. I have no disclosures, um, no relationship to anything I'm going to talk about. I do want to give you one disclaimer that um, the opinions and techniques represented here are my own and not that of the Scleroderma Foundation or um, necessarily anybody else. Um, they're my own and I hope you take something away from today. So what qualifies me to be here talking to you today? Come on in, we have, uh, we have folks trickling in from another session. Um, so my qualifications, as I said, I'm a pharmacist, been a pharmacist for 30 years. I've been a stand-up comic for about 20 years. I spent five years as a caregiver. So I have that going for me. Um, I'm in my 41st year as a single mom, which means I single-handedly kept a teenager alive for a lot of years, a teenage girl, no less. So some of you might be able to relate to that. Um, and for over 60 years, I have been a patient. Just like many of you have had a long journey um, in those six decades, I have dealt with chicken pox, acne and appendectomy, gangrene, a hysterectomy, menopause, breast cancer, a mastectomy, chemotherapy, hemorrhagic E. coli, scleroderma, ovarian cancer, a laparotomy, more chemotherapy, and a freaking corn on my left big toe. I thought I had an STD once, but it was just a straight chiclet. So there you go. You can add golfer's elbow, you can add whatever you want. Those are just the biggies. So what are we gonna talk about today? Here's my outline. <laughs> if you can follow that, um, this is where we're gonna take our journey today. So, as many of you may have grandchildren, uh, might be in my generation, and the other day, my grandson was there, and I said, uh, have you seen my newspaper? I need my newspaper. He says, newspaper? This is the 21st century. Nobody reads newspapers anymore. And he handed me his iPad, right? So, that spider never knew what hit him, okay? <laughs> so, there is a place for newspapers in our lives. 300 versus 17. What am I talking about? Anybody have any ideas? Folks in the room? 300 versus 17. So the average healthy child in this country laughs 300 times a day, and the average adult laughs 17 times a day. That is pathetic, <laughs> and we're gonna try to change that. Um, it was kind of scary when I was doing the research for this presentation that when I first uh, created this about 10 years ago, the number was 400 versus 15. So the kids have come up a little bit from 15 to 17 and the adults have gone down, right? <laughs> um, actually, it's the, it's the opposite. The adults have gone up a little bit and the kids have come down. Um, so what's the difference, right? What do, what do the kids have to get those 300 laps a day versus us? They, they don't have the stress, right? Are we stressed, most of us? Just about every single day, right? We have work stress, laundry stress, marital stress, financial stress, first kids failing algebra stress. The smart kid is still a wise ass stress, right? We got flat tire stress. We have so much traffic stress, social media stress. The in-laws are coming stress and I'm out of fingers. We got that stress, right? And then you add this diagnosis. Suddenly, now you have doctor's appointment stress. You have medical testing stress. You have the pharmacy line. You have insurance problems, right? You have, let's explain scleroderma to one more person, right? How stressful can that be? Plus, you have this diagnosis. And my animation does not work. So I apologize for that. We're gonna get back to that. 
Oh boy, yep, the, the slides are a little bit messed up here, folks. Um, so how do we deal with the stress? Some people turn to alcohol, some people turn to drug use, um, people turn to gambling, people lash out at each other, right? None of those are healthy ways, and we know that there are better ways. We can listen to music. We can, um, I do have a slide here that has all this on it. There we go. We can listen to music. We can get a massage, go out into nature, bubble baths, right? Our pets help us with stress. Exercise is always a good idea. Um, never ever hurts. <laughs> and we know what stress does to our mood, right? I apologize for the slide flipping. Um, stress makes us anxious, irritable, angry. Again, we can get short-tempered, right? Losing our, losing our cool with especially our loved ones or even strangers, right? You ever have somebody just around you that's, you know, having a really bad day and they're lashing out? That's their way of dealing with stress. Stress can make us sad. We can feel panicked, right? Have panic attacks. Um, unfortunately, there's also can be a sense of hopelessness. So everybody's familiar with all of these effects on our emotions and our mood and our brain. But a lot of people aren't aware of the effects of stress on our bodies. So I think the camera's gonna capture my paper here. We're gonna talk about Dan the Caveman for a second. Hopefully you can hear me. I can be very loud. So here's Dan, right? The caveman. He's walking around. He's smelling the flowers. The sun is shining. He's having a great day, right? And then all of a sudden, a tiger jumps out of the jungle. I got one. I got one, right? Did you feel that? Right? So what happens to him? All right? We're talking thousands of years ago, right? What happened? Holy big eyes, right? Holy smokes, right? Pupils are dilated. <laughs> He's not going to sleep for quite a while, right? He has vasodilation to his extremities. So all of this blood is flowing, going crazy everywhere, right? We have, it's called the fight or flight or freeze response. Everybody's familiar, right? With that instantaneous boost of adrenaline, um, epinephrine, right? We also have energy mobilization. This is all about energy because he's got to get away from the tiger, right? So you got the blood flow to his legs and his arms so he can run away. You have glucose, sugar, which is our energy, right? Being mobilized. So glucose goes everywhere. So sugar is going up, right? He's got to think. He's got vasodilation in his brain. What's that do? Holy headache, right? Plus, he's not too happy, <laughs> okay? More energy mobilization, fatty acids. If you're not familiar, that's a way that we store energy in our body. So in this crisis situation, it's a crisis, right? Fatty acids are also mobilized, so we got more stuff going on. The thing about fatty acids is if you don't use them for energy, you store them. Okay, that's where this big belly fat comes from. Okay, all those fatty acids, you're not peeing them out like you do glucose, you're storing them. Belly fat, as we know, horrible for your health, right? But in his case, he's running away from the tiger. He's using all the glucose, he's using all the fatty acids, not a problem for him. Also, digestion is affected when you have that holy tiger, right? So he's got increased stomach acid, stomach's a little upset. Job interview diarrhea, right? That's real, <laughs> okay? All of this is going on, and this is all because of epinephrine and cortisol, okay? Those are stress hormones, very helpful for the caveman, right? He can run away, he can remember what happened. Immune system is affected by this process. So in the crisis situation, the immune system to the skin increases because what if he gets hurt while well, he's running away, right? Brushes up against the bushes. Immune system's ready for that. Our bodies are amazing. 
right? All these processes go on to help him in this crisis. Energy is not used, however, for bone formation when you're in this crisis. So when he falls and breaks the hip here, right? <laughs> Never gonna heal, okay? Lots, lots going on. All of this happening makes us crabby, which we've, we've determined, right? It makes us sick. It also makes us stupid, as it turns out, because epinephrine, one of those two that I talked about, epinephrine and cortisol, epinephrine actually helps us form memories. However, excess cortisol interferes with cognition and memory retrieval. So when this happened to the caveman, this lasted three minutes. The fight or flight response lasts approximately three minutes. Does anybody have stress for three minutes at a time these days? <laughs> right? Yeah. We, we're not done in three minutes, ever. And that is the problem. Stress-related disease emerges out of the fact that we so often activate this physiological system, which has evolved for responding to acute emergencies. That's the key word, acute emergencies. But we turn it on for weeks on end. We worry about the kids. We worry about the mortgage. We worry about the job. We worry about our diagnosis, right? The system did not keep up with societal changes and societal stresses and is just not capable of handling chronic activation. Um, I heard a presentation earlier in the conference and uh, in passing, it was kind of mentioned, oh, we need fight or flight. Yeah, yeah, we do. We need fight or flight when the deer runs out in front of us, right? We need fight or flight when the baby is falling off the counter. What the baby's doing on the counter, I have absolutely no idea. <laughs> we need that, right? We need that energy mobilization for that three minute problem. We do not need it every day. We do not need it in a traffic jam, right? We need it if a truck pulls out in front of us, but we do not need all of this going on in a traffic jam ever. The caveman, he had the release of all that energy, right? All the glucose came, the blood pressure, everything was put to use, everything went back to normal. We don't have a physical release for all of these goings on, okay? So these, as I talked about, some of the ways that we deal with stress. But what if we laugh at those tigers in our lives? What if? Right? We need a physical release. We need an emotional release. What better way than laughing our way through life? Okay? I am, I believe with all my heart, that I have survived two cancers and thrived despite scleroderma because I can laugh my way through just about anything, okay? And I'm gonna explain to you why that works, okay? And I'm gonna help you find ways to bring all of this into your own life. So of course we know that humor helps our mood, right? All the anxiety, depression, and angst I was talking about a good laugh helps that, right? For a minute, we're not sad. So it reduces depression. Um, how many of you, when I said something remotely funny, um, looked at your neighbor when you laughed, right? Laughter improves our social interactions because it's a shared perspective, right? Something makes you laugh, you look over here, to share that laughter with the person next to you, right? You can laugh all by yourself because I do it every day, but it's a special skill that sometimes requires development. <laughs> um, what else does laughter do in humor? Puts us at ease, right? First thing a public speaker often does, myself included, is tell a little joke, right? Because you might not think about this, but sometimes the audience is nervous for us, right? You guys are out there and you want the speaker to do a good job. So you got a little bit of anxiety maybe going on. So by 
by getting that little chuckle out of the way at the beginning, makes me relax a little bit, also makes you guys relax a little bit, right? Saying, okay, this is gonna be kind of cool, right? Humor distracts from a stressful situation. This is a huge one for me, okay? Um, when my grandkid gets hurt, right? They're stressed, they're hypochondriacs and they overreact a little bit, right? So I go through this thing with their whole body, you know, does your arm work? Does your leg work? Does your, do your feet work? And then I get to the armpits, smell the armpits, make like I'm puking and say the armpits work and by then they're laughing, right? So the stressful situation has been diffused because I brought a little humor into the situation. Um, tell you a little story about one of the big ones um, for me, talk about distracting from a stressful situation. When I was um, heavy into doing stand-up comedy, just starting out, so I was going to open mic like five times a week, right? I had a, a bunch of comics that we were all up and coming at the same time. So, I mean, some of them, we don't even know each other's last names maybe, right? But um, we, we spent a lot of time together doing comedy and perfecting our craft. So they were all guys. So I'm the only woman. Well, I get diagnosed with breast cancer and I'm gonna have a mastectomy. I'm gonna have chemotherapy. I'm gonna lose my hair and I'm dealing with it. But I'm like, how am I gonna tell them, right? I mean, how do you tell a, a group of kind of relative friends, kind of strangers that, look, I have cancer. I'm going through this. It's okay, right? We're gonna be fine. So I wrote a little song. You wanna hear it? Okay, I cannot sing to save my life. So bear with me and imagine this is the tune of Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, okay? Carol the busty comic had a lump in her right breast and when the doc removed it, it really failed the cancer test. All of the other comics love to stare at Carol's breasts and now they'll all be crying cause she'll only have the left. Oh, I'm not done. <laughs> For tomorrow morning to Albany she must go, having a mastectomy, oh, think of the comedy. She hopes the other comics don't hold back in what they say, so please keep the boob jokes coming and we can laugh our cares away. We had a cake too. <laughs> we did. Um, so there you go. Distraction, right? Um, mastectomies, breast cancer, very uncomfortable for men, especially. And I was able to diffuse that um, and tell them at the same time, right? Plus, laughter is contagious. Barb, did you give out some bubbles? Okay. So we're going to do a little bit of an experiment because I'm gonna show you that you can fake it till you make it. So anybody that has bubbles with a fish on top that says, wow, in the room, and I hope you folks at home, I really should have told you to bring bubbles to this event. I apologize for leaving that out. We got some, some with fish wow on top. So those that have the fish wow, I just want you to start fake laughing <laughs> and I'm seeing it ripple a little bit through the folks that did not have the fish, right? So even a fake laugh works. Even the anticipation of humor often works, right? So you're in a better mood when somebody's telling a pretty good joke. I mean, don't get me wrong. There are a lot of people out there that cannot tell a joke, and that can be long and painful. <laughs> Believe me. But... um. So all of this helps our mood, right? But how does it help in other ways? Mark Twain said, against the assault of laughter, nothing can stand. Even the Bible says a cheerful heart does a body good like medicine, but a broken spirit makes one sick. So again, it's not just about laughing at a joke, right? It's about humor in general. It's that life perspective and we get that emotional and physical release we need to make this stop going on all the time, okay? 
So can he heal us, right? My little guy in the corner, in case you haven't noticed, all those little people are with us every step of the way. I told you it was an outline. Those stick people, they're there. He says yes. So how does that happen? Somebody saying long distance. Because I have slurred nerves and my fingers don't work. Imagine that. All right, there we go. You know, this this looks much like my living room. Um, if you're, it is sticky. Yeah, they're like post-it notes or something. Um, if you're familiar with the term entropy, which means chaos in nature, I am a big supporter, big supporter of entropy. Chaos is what it's all about. So how does this happen? So here's Dan, right? Our caveman. We already know that good humor. There we go. Boom. So we already know that humor improved his mood, right? So he's a little bit happy. Anybody familiar with endorphins? Right? Do you know where the word endorphins comes from? Endo in medicine means internal, inside, right? Orphans. Morphine. So endorphins are our own morphine that we make. Endorphins greatly increase, right? So this guy is pretty freaking happy. Increase the endorphins due to the laughter. So when you laugh, initially your blood pressure goes up, your heart rate goes up. But once you're done kind of laughing and you're coming back to relax, your blood pressure and heart rate are lower than before you started laughing. So laughing will decrease your blood pressure and heart rate. Facial tension, neck tension, all relaxes when you laugh. You use your diaphragm, right? Better breathing, increase that oxygen intake, which is so important because, you know, if you don't know we need oxygen, I'm not sure what to tell you. Um, cortisol and epinephrine will be Okay, looks pretty happy now, right? We got sunshine going on, walking on sunshine. Um, and that's how laughter works biochemically to help our health, okay? Immune system is affected. So instead of our immune system going out of control, like it does when we're in fight or flight mode, things level off when we laugh. Um, there are a lot of studies going on, especially with um, the big three, cancer, heart disease, and autoimmune diseases, as far as using humor to help relieve some of this. So there they are, and there's our guy. He's pretty happy. So people say, I don't know how to do that, right? Not everybody um, is a comic. <laughs> Not everybody was blessed with the family that I was blessed with that used humor for everything, right? And there was no topic that was untouchable, which you're gonna find out in a little bit. Um, <laughs> so buckle up. <laughs> so um, what can you do to bring humor into your life? You can be silly, right? Why not be silly? How many of you have been silly in the last three days? All right. <laughs> Right? Why not? Why not? I got a whole bucket of these. So you each have to take one because I'm not taking them home. Okay? So there you go. Hopefully he's on the screen right now. Um, be silly. You know what? Guys, close your ears for a second. But women, when you go to the gynecologist, how stressful is that? Right? Little vulnerable position there. Wacky socks. Where the Because you get to keep socks on, right? Where are the wacky socks, the ones with the bells or the pom-poms or the Snoopies or whatever, right? <laughs> whatever works, okay? Um, that's what kids do, right? That's why I gave you bubbles. Bubbles are a little bit silly, right? Bubbles are great. Just, it, it's very calming to blow bubbles. Um, you can do it in unexpected places and make other people smile, right? Let's get that contagiousness going. Um, 
being silly can sometimes be a song, like I did that one song for you. Um, another story about kind of being silly and using music and a song to diffuse a stressful situation. When I was diagnosed with ovarian cancer, <laughs> um, yes, if you're counting, that's two. Um, it was Christmas time, okay, right around Festivus. And, you know, when I was diagnosed with breast cancer, I said, okay, 86% survival rate, this is gonna be fine. We're just gonna move on with life. We're just gonna go through this, no big deal. Ovarian cancer has a 40% survival rate. Um, it killed my sister. So yeah, it was a little bit scary, right? But I was not about to ruin Christmas for my family, especially since maybe it'd be my last one, right? So I decided not to tell anybody for a little while. I just wanted to get through the holidays. Keeping that information inside of you is not easy, okay? So what I did is every time I was feeling a little misty or overwhelmed by this, and I was with people so that I couldn't, you know, show how stressed I was, I would just start singing, if you're happy and you know, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know, clap your hands, right? And get the whole car singing, get the grandkids singing. Everybody sang. I did this for two weeks until New Year's, right? Before I finally told the family what was going on. Um, the only problem with that method is now I can never sing that song in my family's presence because they think I'm sick. So there you have that. Um, what else can you do? You can play, right? When was the last time anybody played with a yo-yo? Are you a caregiver or a patient? You do your hands work, I guess is my question. There you go, yo-yo, right? Play with the yo-yo. Play with whatever you can. Oh, geez, I'm so <laughs> This is why I'm not an athlete. Because I was supposed to go much farther and it was not supposed to knock you out. <laughs> So, oh, that doesn't work either. Oh, great. There we go. Just play, right? Oh, he's, he's opening his yo-yo. He's already on it. Look at this. Look at this. Oh, <laughs> oh my, my trusty assistant here taking care of my virtual world. Um, next time you got to come so you can go home with your very own rubber chicken, right? Um, Another real life story when I was trying to keep that teenager alive, right? If anybody has a teenage girl, you know exactly what I'm talking about, right? Um, we would have these huge fights, huge, huge fights. And when we were done, you know, we'd go our separate ways or whatever. We knew we were gonna be okay when one of us said, wanna play a game of sorry? There's a board game, sorry, if you're not familiar with it. It's just a brainless, move around the board, there's no strategy, there's no anything, and we would play a game of sorry. And then we would know, okay, we're moving on from this big argument, okay? Silly as it is. Um, another thing you can do is bring humor into your life, right? Social media. Oh, oh, don't even get me going, right? You have a choice what comes into your living room, okay? So if you have somebody who's always negative or is always political and that's not your thing, if it's your thing, it's your thing. But if it's not your thing, scroll on by, okay? If it's not bringing you joy, it has no place in your living room, okay? I'm sorry? Oh, okay. Oh, if tell them I'm working. I can't talk right now. Okay, we'll see you tomorrow. Hi, sweetie. Um, we're good. She's like, oh, everybody noticed? Yeah, we did. <laughs> Pretty much, we did. Um, so, oh, God, God. <laughs> so bring it into your life wherever you can, right? Um, or lose it. That's the social media part. Lose those things that aren't making you happy or making you laugh. You don't even have to block. There's this unfollow button, okay? So you don't have to block people. You don't have to unfriend them. You just unfollow them. Sometimes I snooze people for 30 days. I give them a little chance, right? 
And then they come back and I'm like, yeah, no, you're still too negative for me. And unfollows my favorite, but I have like six people that I follow and that's it. And most of them are comics. <laughs> um, so lose the stuff, that's not good, okay? Um, you, you see a picture of me here in the upper right-hand corner. That was one of those situations where we had a baby shower and the niece from New Jersey canceled at the last minute, couldn't come. So we made life-size faces of her and put her in all the pictures. So that's her on a stick drinking with us. Um, you know, do whatever you gotta do to make it funny. You know, everybody was bummed. Oh, Katie's not coming, you know. So let's bring Katie, right? Bring it into your life. Um, go, go seek out comedy. Go to a funny movie. Why anybody goes to a theater nowadays is beyond me because I'd rather watch at home in my PJs. But um, go, to, go to the theater. Better yet, for the price of a movie, you can go to a live comedy show, right? If you've never done it, try it. A lot of times it's local comics, right? They are starving and need gas money. So you, <laughs> you are supporting local artists. You're supporting people who are trying to start out in the business, right? Get a couple of friends together. And for the same price that you pay for a movie, you can have a live experience. You can have that shared perspective. You can look at that person next to you when there's a joke that you both think is hysterical or you both think really sucks because there are those two. Um, I don't do any of those bad jokes, but, you know, some people. Some people do. Um, here's a freebie for you. Go to the card store. Go to the Hallmark store. Okay? There are a lot of really, really funny cards out there. You don't have to buy them. Right? Just read them. My sister and I, after her treatments, used to go to the card store and just sit on the floor and read cards. Right? They can't kick you out. You are shopping. <laughs> right? Right? And I'm not paying five dollars for a card, okay? Um, all my cards come to the from the dollar store. Um, share comedy, right? How many times you read in the comics in the, in that newspaper that we tried to use to kill the spider at the beginning? Um, you read a comic and you say, "That reminds me of Barbara," right? Cut it out. There are these things called envelopes, and they make stamps at the post office, right? Cost like 50, 60 cents. Stick it in the envelope. You don't even have to put your name in there or anything. Send it to Barbara, right? It'll make you feel good. And when she gets something in the mail that makes her laugh and says, oh my gosh, this is so me, right? You're going to make her day. Chances are she'll probably tell you about it when you're talking to her, right? So share it. Share a joke, but please try to be good at it. Um, <laughs> little short jokes. Reader's Digest is a really, really good place um, for clean jokes, because uh, those are hard to find these days, right? I did my best to throw a couple in here, but um, Reader's Digest is great. You know, I I'm a comic, and the one of the hard things about being a comic is it takes more and more to make us laugh because we see things coming, because we have all this experience, and um, Reader's Digest still makes me laugh. So um, Golden Girls still makes me laugh every time, right? So watch the TV shows. It's, there's actually been research that shows watching a rerun of a TV show that you've seen, even if you've seen it 10 times, has more stress reduction potential than watching a new program, a new sitcom that you've never seen because you don't have to invest any energy in the plot, right? All you do is just sit back and get entertained, right? So bring it into your house, laugh, play, be silly, right? Do I own a regular pen? Yes. Why use a regular pen? Okay, this is my work pen for staff meetings. So just bring it, play, be goofy, be silly, right? We got rubber chickens, we got big chickens, we got little chickens. There we go, that's, oh, that was horrible. That was horrible. Oh, see, they're brand new, they're not that flexible. Holy wow, he's got. It's obviously my not my ex-husband because he has no hole in his head. Um, here we go. Ah, oh, they are not flying very well, but we have plenty of them. So um, please pick one up. Um, the other thing, why wait, right? How many times <laughs> you got to stick your finger in his head and pull back the tail? 
Um, and these are available at the buck and a quarter store. Okay. Um, just about everything I use here available at the buck and a quarter store. So way fun. Good job. Good job. Um, whoopee cushion, right? Dollar and a quarter store. Always funny, especially if you have kids around. Okay. And the fun thing when you have kids around is you make them laugh and that's infectious, right? I mean, I, I was walking down the hallway on my six mile route to my room last night and <laughs> I heard, I heard a baby laughing, like must have been being tickled or something. I don't particularly like children, but um, it, it was like magical. It made, you know, it made me really happy. So it really is infectious. Um, why wait? How often are we saying, oh, we're going to laugh about this someday, right? Why wait till someday? Oh, they're all practicing out there now. I should just throw them so you have them. Here we go. Bear with us, folks at home. Um, dollar and a quarter store has chickens. They have, um, I have more chickens somewhere. Um, they also come in a dinosaur version, just so you know. I'm here to serve. Um, so why wait, right? When you say we're going to laugh about this someday, why wait till someday, right? Laugh about it now. I have a very long story about getting stuck with two women named Anita who were in their 70s at an airport in Miami, I had to pay for a hotel room for these people I didn't even know, and they bickered the whole time, and I was so stressed out, I don't know how many beers I drank, and if I had taken my own advice, because it's a very funny story now when I tell it, we do not have time for that today, but um, you know, if I had made the story in my head while it was happening, I would have been a lot less stressed and a lot less drunk. Um, so you can use your own mind, right? We don't have to have props. We can use our heads to bring comedy into our lives. Take a step back, right? Imagine you're in that sitcom when there's something going on, right? What would a comedy writer do with this situation, right? Um, everybody's familiar with the old Lucille Ball when they're in the candy factory and the candy is coming and coming and coming, right? And it's so frustrating. Well, they took that situation, a very frustrating situation, which we the type we all face, things are coming at us, right? And they made it instead ridiculously um, frustrating, you know, instead of taking the ridiculously frustrating and made it just plain ridiculous, okay? So take a step back and try to look at your situation from the outside, okay? What would a comedy writer do with this? Value extremes, this is one of my favorite techniques, favorite, okay? So I'm trained in improv comedy as well. And um, in improv, if you've ever watched any improvisation, the level keeps rising and rising and rising and rising, okay? So you might start with um, a dog and then you have a dog that turns into a giraffe and then you have a giraffe that turns into an elephant and things just keep getting bigger and bigger um, and more ridiculous, usually ends up being funny. Although, believe it or not, in improv, that is not the purpose. Um, it just ends up getting that way because we use this technique of extremes. So um, if you're in a long line, for example, right? You're in a long line at the bank, it's not moving. That's one of our stupid little stressors, right? That if I could go back to the caveman, I can't because he's glued apparently to the back of this board. Um, he's on the floor. Oh, he's on the floor, okay. Um, you know, it, it's going to last longer than three minutes and our blood pressure is going up. Not a good situation. Take it to the extreme, right? You can do this in your head or even better, do it with the person behind you or in front of you in line. Looks like we're going to be here till Christmas, right? It, it's July, but we're going to be here till Christmas in this line. So what is it I could get you? What, what, what would you like for Christmas or... Do we do a grab bag with the whole line? Do we pick names, right? Where are we going to put the Christmas tree in this bank? We need to figure this out because we are still going to be here at Christmas, right? Who's in charge of lights? Who's baking the brownies for Christmas? We have to run out and get a turkey. If you could save my place in line, I could go do that and come back and we'll still be in this line, right? So just take it to the extreme because people say, we say all the time, we're going to be here forever, right? Use that to your advantage that expression, because you're really not going to be there forever, right? Pretend you're going to be. Strike up a conversation. I guarantee it's going to make you feel better, and it's probably going to make that person that you're interacting with. You can get three, four people in it, right? 
Um, when my sister was doing her treatments, we had to drive to Albany um, for all of them, which is about an hour and a half. We would run into a lot of traffic. We would run into a lot of jerk drivers, right? So we came up with this thing that, you know, you have the guy in front of you that's got the right blinker on, 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 and then they make a left. You been behind that guy, right? Instead of getting upset, think to yourself, you know, he's probably on the phone with the kidnappers, right? And they're telling him where to drop that ransom money. So he's getting, they say, you're going to turn right in a minute. So he puts his blinker on and he's already. And then at the last minute, the kidnapper says, turn left. So just imagine he's on the phone with the kidnappers, right? Give that other person the benefit of the doubt. Because sometimes even I am the a-hole on the road, right? Even me. We, we're all there, okay? Um, so those are some of the examples of how you can value extremes to bring comedy to a distressful situation. Um, you can have a contest with an annoying thing, okay? I work from home. We have all Zoom meetings. We have staff meetings every week. We have meetings with staff on and off throughout the week. I have a coworker who twirls her hair on the screen. So there's her face, and this is what I see through the home. I can't believe she has hair left, right? <laughs> and it's stupid that it annoys me. Right, but these little things annoy, like the pen clicker guy in the meeting, right? Dumb little things that should not get to us, but because we're so overwhelmed with our lives, these little things get to us. So I, I try to go by the mantra that I cannot change someone else's behavior, I can only change my reaction to that behavior, right? This is in my control, that is not. So I have a contest, fortunately, my boss is in on the contest, so I don't have to just play this with myself, um, but you can do this by yourself too. So I count the number of seconds she goes without twirling her hair to see what her new record could possibly be, right? So it's like, oh, geez, she went 22 seconds this time. Well, oh, we're down to six seconds. Oh, we're back up to 12 seconds, right? And this is what I do during a staff meeting when I'm probably supposed to be paying attention and heaven forbid if my coworkers ever watch this video. That will not be good. Um, I had a, um, and this required a little bit of creativity when I worked in community pharmacy. I had a boss who used the, now, little background, um, I'm not religious at all. I, I, I do not want to offend anybody by this, but I was raised Catholic, Catholic school, the plaid skirt, the whole nine yards, right? And certain things, even when you get away from religion, just never leave your head, right? So do not use the name of God in vain. So the only time you use God's name is when you're talking about God. So my boss had this horrible habit of saying Jesus Christ all the time. As unreligious as I've been for four or 50 years, it bothered me. Because there's, there are better words you can use, right? Why would you use that? Because that's offensive to some people, and it was actually offensive to me, and I'm not even religious. Can't change her behavior, I'm gonna change my reaction to her behavior. So in my head, I would come up with a reason why Jesus Christ might be in our pharmacy. <laughs> so she would, you know, be cursing and saying, Jesus Christ, and I'd be like, is he a pickup or a delivery? <laughs> and I'd say it out loud, because what the heck, right? And she'd be like, who? I'm like, Jesus Christ, you just mentioned him. So I thought maybe we were filling his prescription. I don't know. And I got so good at it. And I got so annoying to her that she stopped doing it. Right? So that contest worked for me. Um, and that reaction. Another reaction it, when I was in pharmacy, I was hired by a family um, pharmacy. So it's like my first two weeks on the job, extremely busy. We had what was called the hot seat. So you were front and center, and in a community family-owned pharmacy, the people waiting are there. They're right there. They're not shopping for, you know, beer and everything else like in CBS. They are standing there waiting. So I'm, you know, I'm there, and there's glass, and there's a drop-off counter, like, right here. And this woman gave me her prescription. I took her information, and I'm filling her prescription, and she stood there like this in that window, staring at me. 
while I was filling her prescription. She's right there, right? And I'm stressed, new job, I'm getting annoyed. And she's not, I'm like, it'll be ready in a couple minutes, you know? She didn't move. We have chairs up front if you want a sandwich. She didn't move. And I could feel that bam, 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 bam going on, right? I mean, I was almost at the point of tears, right? Uh, in case you don't know, a pharmacist has your life in their hands every time they fill a prescription. It's a little bit of a stressful job, right? Um, and she's just, right? So in my head, I said, I wonder what she would do if I just went, <laughs> I didn't do it. I just thought about it. I cracked myself up inside, had a little smirk on my face and it never bothered me again, right? So just think, what would happen if I just did this wacky thing, right? You don't have to do it. You could just make yourself laugh. So use your head, use your imagination. Um, now we're gonna get to the sticky wickets. Um, Life does not cease to be funny. This is one of my favorite quotes. Life does not cease to be funny when people die any more than it ceases to be serious when people laugh. Um, I'm going to remind you, like, like, a lot of you missed the beginning because you were late. Um, it's okay, I'm teasing you. Um, the techniques presented are my own. Do not reflect those of my hosts or the Scleroderma Foundation, okay? Um, buckle up a little bit. And reminder number two, which I really didn't say at the beginning, I am not a nurturer. Okay, in case you haven't noticed, I'm a little bit like, you know, put on the cowboy boots and, you know, cowboy up. And um, just just to give you an idea of how I'm not a nurturer, when my daughter was away at college, she called me crying because both of her goldfish died. I said, I'll take a drive up, I'll bring some tartar sauce, everything will be fine. <laughs> Turns out that wasn't the right thing to say because everyone knows cocktail sauce for goldfish, right? <laughs> Not tartar sauce. <laughs> um, so the hard stuff, right? We all have a lot of hard stuff. So we've talked about some of the, you know, traffic and lines and all that, you know, stupid stuff. But we have hard stuff, especially those of us that are here, those of us with scleroderma, those of us that have uh, patients with scleroderma or family members with scleroderma, it's hard right? That doesn't mean we can't laugh, okay? It, if anything, it means we need to try even harder to bring humor into our lives, okay? Um, here's an, another personal story. When I was diagnosed with the breast cancer, which you all heard about the party, um, <laughs> I was simultaneously diagnosed, diagnosed with scleroderma. So it was at the same time. I was doing a lot of stand-up comedy, and as it turns out, Cancer jokes, boob jokes, bald jokes, they just write themselves, right? That was easy stuff. Um, I was writing jokes about breast cancer like one every day, right? Scleroderma, not a funny thing about it. Um, I And then my skin got so hard, I couldn't laugh. I couldn't smile. I couldn't yawn. Um, my disease came on fast and furious. I could barely lift my arms over my head. I couldn't bend my knees. I was hard as a rock, right? Nothing funny about this. Um, one thing I will add besides laughter, exercise, huge, huge, huge. Um, I exercised every day. So um, for the first time in my life, I was a little depressed, right? I still wrote the boob jokes, but scleroderma in the background, a little depressed because nothing funny about it. And then one day I was going for a walk and I wrote my very first scleroderma joke. And I was never depressed about scleroderma again. That is honest truth. Um, it was like a miracle. It sounds silly, but um, so scleroderma makes everything on my body hard and tight. Great for sex, sucks for everything else. There's my first scleroderma joke. And then I wrote more, right? I can still do sign language, only now I have a really heavy accent. And, and, and there's more. Um, so, you know, once I pulled humor out of that situation, depression lifted and it, it really, really was like a miracle. So you have to find the funny. Um, when my dad was 80 years old, 
he went in for open heart surgery. Um, I told him, you have a choice. You know, that's kind of risky for an 80 year old. I said, you have a choice. He said, my doctor said, do it. So I, of course, I went to the hospital before he was being wheeled into surgery. And I told him I loved him. And I said, and dad, never, ever forget. Manamana. 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 Right? You cannot possibly be stressed while singing the Manamana song. You can't, right? So my last words to my dad, my best friend, were the Manamana song because he did not wake up from the surgery. So um, bring it. Um, even in those huge situations, we're going to talk a little bit about, oh, let's go back. Um, we're going to stay here for a minute. You can watch me rock climbing. That was a long time ago. Um, so some advice, practical tips for you guys, okay, in these situations, like real stuff you can use, because not everybody sings the Menomina song every day, like I do, right? Um, two words for you, gift bag, okay? Again, dollar and a quarter store, right? All of this is available there. And I challenge you to just get a cart and go through the store. I'm gonna explain what I'm talking about. So my sister started this. I had a hysterectomy so that I would not get breast or ovarian cancer because I had bad genes, ended up with both, but that's another story. So when I was going into the hospital for the surgery, right? As a caregiver, you know, you gotta be there at four o'clock in the morning for a 10, 10 a.m. surgery, right? You gotta get naked at 5 a.m for a 10 a.m. surgery. And there you are laying there in the bed, right? And your caregiver's there and you're both sitting there. And you have this surgery test, whatever you have going on, coming up, that's all that's on your mind, right? You barely have a magazine. What do you talk about, right? When you're sitting there, you just have, it's a very stressful situation, right? So my sister got me a gift bag. Everything came from the dollar store. So I was having a hysterectomy, ovaries, everything. In the gift bag was a children's book, Don't Be Afraid of the Doctor. Um, there was a deck of cards in there so we could play cards. There was bubbles, of course. There was a giant Easter egg because I was losing all my eggs and my ovaries, right? <laughs> um, and all this other stuff. She wrapped each thing individually in tissue paper. So it took probably an hour to go through all this stuff in the gift bag. We played with the bubbles, we played with the egg, we had, there was a little stuffed animal, we read the little children's book, right? What a way to make time pass, okay? We had nurses peeking around the corner, like what the hell's going on in there? You're having so much fun, right? We're, you can have fun, you can laugh, just because you're sitting there in a hospital in a paper gown, doesn't mean you need to stop doing any of this, okay? Um, so then that was our thing, right? So she broke her ankle and she had to have screws put in her ankle. So when she went for her surgery, right? I brought the gift bag. I had purchased like 10 different dolls at the dollar and a quarter store. It was a dollar store back then. And just ripped the left leg off of every one of them and just wrapped up the legs and put them in the bag. So she got 10 legs, right? Um, I gave her a screwdriver mix. I gave her a screwdriver. I gave her um, a butterfly net because she had a screw loose. Right? So just, but all of this, you know, I didn't plan what I was gonna do. I just went into the dollar store and thought, okay, she's having surgery on her ankle, screws in her, in her ankle, what can apply? Just go up and down every aisle, right? Um, when I had my huge ovarian cancer surgery, um, they didn't know what they were gonna find when they went in, right? So my daughter and my niece, huge gift bag, right? The game operation, we had that, batteries included, right? Um, they bought, they put liver spot cream because I had some spots on my liver, some cancer spots on my liver. So they brought me liver spot cream. They got me turkey basting string so that in case they didn't sew me up very well, I could use that. Um, they gave me Play-Doh so I could make some new organs in case I was going to lose any, right? <laughs> so we had all this stuff to play with while we're waiting for what's going to be a huge life determining surgery, right? So um, use your imagination, give it a try. You can always email me if you need some ideas. So there's um, illness tests, all that stuff. So now we get to the big one, right? The stickiest wicket of all, um, people die, right? 
That doesn't mean we have to stop laughing, okay? Um, and again, you know, I grew up in a family that found just about everything funny. Um, so we didn't have a problem with any of this. So you know your people, you know where the line is, right? I have been asked to remove myself from a funeral home because um, there are certain people you just shouldn't sit next to. Um, so yeah, these are some of my loved ones that I have lost. Um, so when my dad died after that open heart surgery, because he had strokes, um, when he died, which he waited till 4th of July, we, we pulled the plug on the 3rd and he waited till 4th of July so that we celebrate every year, right? Um, we, uh, oh, you know, I didn't tell you my favorite traffic tip. Look at me, Barbara. I'm slipping, right? You got to keep these in your car, right? For when you're in traffic. Um, so when dad died, <laughs> right? Buck in a quarter store. And it's like getting in my mouth. Talk about dry mouth. Um, so when dad died, I bought these for all of us in the family. So we had like 11 of us going through pictures. You know, you go through pictures for the celebration of life. We don't do funerals. We do celebration of life. I can't talk with that mustache in my mouth. Um, so I bought these for the entire family and we put them on to go through the pictures. So it was, there was no crying. There was only laughing. Um, the funeral director showed up <laughs> and walked in and there's 11 of us sitting there like this. And he knew my dad and he was like, very appropriate. <laughs> right? Because my dad had a great sense of humor. Um, it was a way to remember a funny guy in a funny way. When we lost our beloved volleyball coach who had coached girls for 20, 30 years, right? There were 300 young women and young girls at in this church, right? And this is in a church for this funeral, all upset, all visibly crying, right? Their beloved coach, he had such an impact on their lives. And they said, does anybody want to speak? I do not know how not to speak. So of course I went up, right? And um, there's the coffin like right there. And I said, well, you know, we're here to say goodbye to Jim. And he was on time for once today, right? <laughs> and he's probably wearing clean pants. 300 people laughed now instead of crying because they knew Jim was always late and Jim never had on clean pants, right? Um, so if you love somebody enough, you really can still hear their laughter after they're gone. So remember them, honor them um, by keeping yourself healthy and happy. And uh, I gotta go, cause I got the, I got the light. But um, remember, it's not just about laughing, it's sharing our perspectives, right? It's using our creativity. It's an element of discovery. We learn things about ourselves sometimes when we can use humor. Um, and we can reduce the healthcare costs in this country by 20%. That's a lot of dollars if people just laugh more. So thank you guys for coming. Please swing by and get a toy because I don't want to take this home.